It was just another Thursday afternoon, and I, Ella Duncan, found myself at the cosy corner table of our favourite cafe, sipping lukewarm coffee and pouring out my heart to Marge. She's not just my best friend, but also someone who's seen me through the highs and lows of my life. As a partner at a reputable law firm, I'm no stranger to stress. But this was different. This was personal. My husband Tom, I began, the words tinged with a mix of frustration and disbelief. He's just been so difficult lately. It's like he's living in the past, always making these sexist comments, acting as if women are beneath him. The weight of my words hung heavily in the air, reflecting the burden in my heart. Marge listened intently, her eyes filled with concern. She's a nurse, you see, compassionate by profession and nature. After I finished, there was a pause, a moment where the clinking of coffee cups seemed louder than usual. Then she leaned in, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Ella, what if there was a way to make Tom see the world through your eyes? To truly understand what it's like to be a woman today? I was skeptical. Marge, how is that even possible? I asked. My curiosity peaked despite my initial hesitation. She proceeded to tell me about a new drug they had at the hospital, something experimental, which made people highly suggestible to ideas and commands. Just a drop, she said, and he'd be open to experiencing life from a completely different perspective. I couldn't help but feel a surge of hope mixed with apprehension. It sounded like something out of a sci-fi novel. Yet the possibility of Tom finally understanding, really understanding, was too tempting to ignore. As I sat there listening to Marge describe the drug and its effects, I felt a mix of emotions swirling within me. Was I really considering this? Could this be the solution to my discontent? Or was it just the beginning of something even more complicated? The cafe's hum of background noise faded as I pondered the implications, my mind racing with thoughts of what could be. This wasn't just about teaching Tom a lesson. It was about seeking understanding and empathy in our strained relationship. The seed of a daring plan was planted in that moment, and little did I know, it was the start of a journey that would change everything between us. The decision to go along with Marge's plan didn't come easy. Lying in bed that night, staring at the ceiling, I wrestled with my conscience. Intrigued yet desperate, I felt the heavy tug of guilt mixed with an overwhelming desire for change. What am I doing? I thought to myself. This wasn't just about slipping Tom a mysterious drug. It was about crossing a line I had never even approached before. The next evening, as I prepared dinner, my hands trembled slightly, not from fear, but from the weight of the impending action. Tom arrived home in his usual manner, grumbling about his day, oblivious to the storm brewing inside me. We sat down to eat, and the normalcy of it all felt surreal. The clink of cutlery against the plates echoed my racing heartbeat as I reached for the vial Marge had discreetly handed me earlier that day. With a deep breath to steady my nerves, I managed to add a single drop of the clear, odourless liquid to Tom's glass of water when he wasn't looking. My heart pounded against my chest, a loud drum in the quiet of the dinner table. Here goes nothing, I muttered under my breath, watching intently as Tom lifted the glass to his lips and drank. The effect was subtle but noticeable. His usual tense demeanour softened, his furrowed brow relaxed, and he seemed more open more present. Seizing the opportunity, I steered our conversation towards gender roles and the daily challenges women face, topics we usually avoided to prevent arguments. Tom, I said cautiously, have you ever really thought about what it's like to walk a mile in a woman's shoes, to experience the world from her perspective? He looked at me, not with the usual dismissiveness, but with a quiet contemplation. As we cleared the table together, a task he seldom shared with me. I fetched a delicate, lace-trimmed apron from the pantry and handed it to him. Why don't you try this on? Just for tonight to get a tiny glimpse of my world, I suggested, my voice a mixture of earnestness and apprehension. To my astonishment, he didn't resist. He tied the apron around his waist, a puzzled yet compliant look on his face. My heart was a mix of hope and fear as I watched my husband, 
the man who had always been steeped in his traditional views, standing in our kitchen wearing a piece of feminine clothing, albeit something as simple as an apron. The evening progressed, and with each passing moment I could see a shift in Tom's perception. There was a softness in his eyes, a certain vulnerability that I hadn't seen before. It was as if the act of wearing the apron, of stepping even in a small way into my world, had begun to erode the wall of sexism he had built around himself. As we sat down with our evening tea, I looked at Tom, really looked at him and saw not just my husband, but a man caught between the tides of change and tradition. And at that moment, I realized the enormity of what I had set into motion. This wasn't just about changing Tom's view on women, it was about transforming our relationship and perhaps ourselves in the process. The days following that dinner felt like a surreal journey through uncharted territory. Each morning I found myself wrestling with a growing sense of unease mixed with a strange, compelling drive to push the boundaries further. As Tom continued to consume the subtly dosed beverages I prepared, his usual resistant self seemed to fade, replaced by a more malleable and receptive persona. One evening I decided to test the waters further. I laid out a soft floral dress along with a pair of light pink heels. The fabric felt delicate and alien in my hands, a stark contrast to Tom's usual rugged attire. I remember my heart racing, the thumping so loud I thought Tom would hear it when I asked him to try them on. Just to see, I had said, what it's really like for me, preparing for a day at work. To my mixed horror and relief, Tom looked at the outfit, then at me, with a dazed compliance in his eyes. He dressed quietly, the fabric whispering against his skin, transforming his silhouette into something unfamiliar. Watching him, a part of me shrank in guilt, yet another part, darker and more desperate, urged me on. I introduced makeup next, under the guise of completing the experience. My hands trembled as I applied foundation, blush and lipstick to his face, each stroke erasing a bit more of the man I knew. He sat there, looking at his reflection with a quiet bewilderment, as if he recognized the face but couldn't connect it to his sense of self. In those moments of clarity, when the drug's influence seemed to wane, I saw Tom struggle with his identity, his eyes clouding with confusion and a dawning realization of his altered state. But these moments were fleeting, quickly washed away by the next wave of compliance brought on by the drug. The escalation of these events brought a complex mix of emotions. There was power in controlling the narrative, in steering Tom toward empathy and understanding, yet the power came with a heavy burden of guilt and fear. What started as an attempt to enlighten had morphed into a tangled web of manipulation and deceit. Each step forward in Tom's transformation felt like a step deeper into a moral quagmire. The sight of him, Awkwardly navigating his movements in heels, his face painted with cosmetics, was both a victory and a profound loss. It was a constant battle between the satisfaction of seeing him understand a fraction of my world and the sinking realization of the manipulation it involved. As days turned into weeks, the line between teaching and controlling blurred. The man sitting across from me at breakfast, dressed in my clothes, looking out through eyes shadowed with makeup, was both the Tom I wanted him to become and a stranger I was starting to fear. This duality haunted me, a reminder of the lengths to which I'd gone in my quest for understanding and equality and the potential cost of this unconventional journey we were on. As the days blurred into a surreal tableau of fabric, makeup and whispered justifications, I reached a pivotal decision. It was time for Tom to experience the world not just from within the confines of our home, but through the unfiltered lens of public scrutiny. The idea was daunting, charged with the potential for revelation and disaster in equal measure. With a heart heavy with trepidation and a mind clouded by conflicting motives, I suggested to Tom that we go out for dinner. To celebrate, I said, masking my anxiety with a feigned cheerfulness. He agreed oblivious to the depth of my plan, still under the subtle yet persistent influence of the drug. That evening, as I helped Tom into a tastefully elegant dress, my hands were steady but my soul was not. The dress, 
a soft blue that highlighted his eyes, seemed like both a garment and a gauntlet, challenging the very foundations of our relationship. As I applied his makeup, each brushstroke felt like a step further away from the person I once knew, and yet, paradoxically closer to the truth I sought to reveal. Stepping out into the evening, Tom's initial awkwardness in heels was replaced by a cautious grace, a testament to the human capacity to adapt. The drive to the restaurant was silent, filled with unspoken questions and anxieties. I watched him, his profile illuminated by the passing streetlights, wondering if I was liberating or losing the man I loved. The restaurant, with its gentle buzz of conversation and clinking of glasses, felt like a stage set for a play of profound personal significance. As we took our seats, I noticed the glances cast our way, a mixture of curiosity and judgment that women often endure. Tom, sensing the attention, seemed to shrink, his earlier confidence waning under the weight of public gaze. Throughout the meal, I observed a transformation within Tom that was both heartbreaking and illuminating. He experienced, perhaps for the first time, the discomfort of being scrutinised, his every move watched and potentially criticised, a clumsy gesture with a fork, a misstep in conversation. Each moment was a revelation to him of the daily trials faced by those living on the receiving end of societal biases. The turning point came when a group of men at the bar laughed pointedly in our direction. I saw the hurt and confusion in Tom's eyes as he realised that the laughter was aimed at him, at us. In that moment, his usual defensive bravado was absent, replaced by a vulnerable understanding of the unkindness women often endure. As we left the restaurant, Tom was quiet, but his silence was not one of anger or resentment. It was reflective, the silence of someone who has seen the world from a different perspective and cannot unsee the truths revealed. The drive home was a journey of silent contemplation, the night around us a backdrop to the internal shifts taking place. That night, as we lay in bed, the physical closeness between us was juxtaposed with the emotional chasm that had opened. Tom's experiences, while performed under the influence of manipulation, had unwittingly become genuine. He had walked a mile in my shoes, quite literally, and the journey had changed us both. In the darkness, I whispered, I'm sorry, Tom. I never meant for things to go this far. He turned to me, his eyes glistening in the moonlight, and said softly, I know, Ella, but maybe, maybe I needed to see, to really see. The turning point was not just in the events of the evening, but in the unspoken agreement that something fundamental had shifted in our relationship. The facade of control I held was crumbling, revealing the raw, tender reality of our shared vulnerability. The days following our public outing were thick with unspoken words and heavy glances. Tom, once so assured in his identity and beliefs, now moved through our home like a ghost, haunted by the echoes of laughter and the piercing stares that had followed him that night. He spent long hours in front of the mirror studying his reflection not with vanity but with a perplexed scrutiny. The man who had confidently navigated the world was now questioning the very fabric of his being. As I watched him, a pang of guilt would twist inside me. I had intended to enlighten, not shatter. One evening as I passed by our bedroom I found Tom sitting on the edge of the bed, his head in his hands, the remnants of mascara streaking his face. He looked up at me, his eyes a wellspring of confusion and hurt. I don't understand, Ella, he murmured, his voice a fragile thread of sound. I thought I knew who I was, but now I feel so exposed, so vulnerable. Seeing him like this, stripped of his usual armour of masculinity, revealed a side of Tom I had never known. His journey into the feminine realm had peeled back layers of his identity, exposing a core of raw, untested self-awareness. He spoke of the public scrutiny, the whispers and laughs, how each one felt like a needle pricking at his armour. I've never had to think about how I walk, how I sit, how I exist in a space, he continued, his words spilling out with hesitant urgency. As a man, I just was, but as a woman, 
Every action, every choice seemed to matter more, to be open to judgment. Tom's struggle with his identity and newfound vulnerability was palpable. He grappled with the dichotomy of his experiences, the contrast between his lived reality as a man and his brief foray into the world as a woman. He expressed a nascent empathy for the constant balancing act women perform, the unending scrutiny we face. But with this empathy came a battle within. The Tom who had confidently navigated the world with an unspoken sense of entitlement was now confronting a side of himself that was submissive, open to influence and vulnerable. This internal conflict was a whirlwind, uprooting long-held beliefs and forcing him to confront uncomfortable truths about himself and the society we inhabit. His previous dismissiveness towards discussions of gender inequality now seemed to haunt him, a spectre of his former self clashing with the person he was becoming. I used to think it was all so simple, he confessed one night as we lay in the dark, the distance between us filled with the turmoil of his revelation. Men are men, women are women, but now I feel like I'm somewhere in between, caught in a storm I never saw coming. This period of Tom's realization and conflict was a crucible, testing the very essence of his character. As he navigated this labyrinth of self-discovery, I could see the strain of his internal struggle, the battle between clinging to the familiar shores of his identity and venturing into the uncharted waters of empathy and understanding. In those days, our home became a silent witness to Tom's transformation, each room echoing with the remnants of his inner turmoil. The man who returned to me each evening was someone new, someone bruised by the journey but perhaps better for it. Someone who was learning to reconcile the fragments of his identity into a mosaic of deeper understanding. The tension between us had been building, a silent crescendo that filled every corner of our home with anticipation and dread. It was a Saturday evening when it all came to a head, the sky outside painted with the deep blues and purples of twilight, mirroring the storm brewing within our walls. We sat across from each other at the dinner table, an ocean of unspoken thoughts stretching between us. The clinking of our cutlery against the plates punctuated the silence, each sound a sharp reminder of the growing rift in our relationship. Tom looked weary, the shadows under his eyes testament to the inner turmoil that plagued him. As the meal progressed, the air thick with the weight of our mutual avoidance, Tom finally set down his fork, his movements deliberate. He looked at me with a mix of resignation and defiance, as if bracing himself against an invisible storm. Ella, he began, his voice steady yet charged with emotion. We can't keep going on like this. His words, simple and direct, were like a dam breaking, releasing a flood of pent-up frustrations and fears. I felt a lump form in my throat, my heart pounding against my ribcage. I know, Tom, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper, Acknowledging the elephant in the room we'd both been tiptoeing around for weeks. He leaned forward, his hands clasped tightly together. I've been through a lot these past weeks, he continued, and I can't deny that it's opened my eyes. But at what cost, Ella? At what cost to our marriage? To who I am? The pain in his voice was palpable, cutting through me like a knife. I realized then how far I had pushed him how my desire to change his perspective had morphed into a controlling force that threatened to undermine the very foundation of our relationship. I never meant to hurt you, I said, my voice trembling with emotion. I just wanted you to understand, to see the world from my point of view. But I lost myself in the process, and I forced you into a role you never asked for. Tom's face softened slightly, the harsh lines of anger giving way to a more reflective expression. I get it, Ella, I do, he sighed, a mixture of frustration and clarity in his eyes. Living as a woman, even for just a little while, has shown me so much, but it's also made me feel lost, like I'm caught between who I was and who I've become. The room felt charged with the raw intensity of our exchange, each word laden with the weight of our shared journey. The power dynamics that had once defined our relationship were now laid bare. The forced femininity that I had imposed on Tom a glaring symbol of the control I had exerted over him. Yet, 
amidst the tumult of our confrontation, there was a thread of understanding, a mutual recognition of the profound journey we had undertaken. Tom, in his forced walk in feminine shoes, had glimpsed the complexities of gendered experiences, while I had come face to face with the consequences of my actions. We sat there, the remnants of our meal forgotten, diving into the depths of our shared experiences. The conversation was fraught with the tension of our power struggles, yet underpinned by a growing sense of empathy and understanding. The climactic confrontation that evening was a cathartic release, a necessary storm that cleared the air between us. It was painful, raw, and undeniably real, marking a pivotal moment in our marriage. We were two people, fundamentally changed, standing at the crossroads of our past and the uncertain path of our future grappling with the complex tapestry of identity, power, and love that bound us together. In the days following our confrontation, a fragile peace settled over our home. The storm of emotions had subsided, leaving in its wake a quiet determination to find a new normal. Tom, once lost in the tumult of his identity crisis, began to navigate his way back to me. But as a changed man, the transformation wasn't immediate or dramatic, but rather a slow blossoming of awareness and understanding. Tom started to engage more thoughtfully in conversations about gender and equality, his insights tempered by his own experiences of vulnerability and scrutiny. I watched as he gradually shed the remnants of his old biases, like a snake sloughing off its skin, revealing a more empathetic and considerate person beneath. He began to express a genuine respect for the struggles and triumphs of women, not just in abstract terms, but in the concrete realities of daily life. Tom's newfound perspective was not limited to words. It manifested in his actions, in the way he interacted with female colleagues, friends and even strangers. His empathy was no longer an imposed lesson, but a genuine part of his character. One evening, as we sat in the soft glow of the living room, Tom turned to me with a look of earnest reflection. Ella, he said, his voice imbued with a quiet strength. I can't undo the past, nor can I fully erase the person I was. But I can learn, grow, and be better. I want to be better, for you, for us. His words were a balm to the lingering wounds between us. It was clear that Tom's journey into the realm of femininity, however manipulated and coerced, had irrevocably altered his perception of the world and his place within it. He spoke of his experiences not with resentment, but with a sense of gratitude, acknowledging the harsh but necessary lessons they had imparted. Our relationship, once strained under the weight of unchallenged norms and power imbalances, began to evolve into a more equal partnership. Tom's respect for me and for women in general was no longer an abstract concept, but a lived reality, influencing his thoughts, choices, and interactions. The resolution of our turbulent journey was not marked by grand gestures or declarations, but by the quiet, steady work of rebuilding trust and understanding. We learned to navigate our relationship with a newfound balance, acknowledging the scars of our past, but choosing to move forward with empathy and respect as our guides. In this new chapter of our lives, Tom's profound understanding and respect for women became the cornerstone of our renewed bond. It was not a perfect resolution, for life is seldom without its flaws, but it was real and grounded in the hard-earned truths of our experiences. Together, we stepped into a future where Tom's experiences as a woman, however artificially induced, served as a beacon of change guiding us towards a more balanced and respectful partnership. Our journey was a testament to the transformative power of empathy and the possibility of redemption and growth in the face of our deepest struggles. As the seasons changed, so did the landscape of our relationship, painting a picture of growth and mutual respect that neither Tom nor I could have envisioned in those tumultuous early days. Our journey had led us to a place where the rigid boundaries of gender roles and perceptions softened, allowing us to explore the depths of our partnership with newfound openness and fluidity. In this new chapter, our home became a sanctuary of understanding, 
where conversations about gender and identity flowed as freely as the laughter that once again filled our spaces. Tom, with his evolved perspective, brought a gentleness and thoughtfulness that enriched our interactions. He no longer shied away from discussions about feminism and equality. Instead, he engaged with them, bringing insights shaped by his unique experiences. We found joy in small acts of shared life, from Tom occasionally donning an apron to cook dinner, not as a gesture of forced femininity, but as an expression of partnership, to me sometimes taking the lead in tasks traditionally deemed masculine. These acts, once potential sources of conflict, became symbols of our evolved understanding and respect for each other's capabilities and preferences. Our social circles noticed the change too. Friends and family commented on the subtle shifts in Tom's demeanour and our interactions. We became known among our acquaintances as a couple who not only survived a storm of identity and power, but emerged from it stronger, more united in our mutual respect and understanding. Tom's experiences, once a source of inner turmoil, were now the bedrock of his advocacy for gender equality, both in personal and professional spheres. He wrote articles, participated in forums, and engaged in community work, sharing his journey and the lessons learned, hoping to inspire others to challenge their prejudices and embrace empathy and understanding. As for me, I found a renewed love for the man I married, not just for the person he was, but for the person he had become. Our journey had not been easy, but the challenges we faced and overcame together enriched our bond, infusing it with a depth and resilience that I had once feared were lost. In the quiet moments, when we sat watching the sunset or walking hand in hand, I could feel the strength of our shared journey, a testament to the power of understanding and transformation. Our relationship, once marred by power struggles and unexamined norms, had blossomed into a partnership of equals, where gender roles were no longer rigid scripts to follow, but fluid expressions of our individual and collective identities. The epilogue of our story was not just an end, but a beginning. A gateway to a future where Tom and I navigated life's complexities, not as predefined roles, but as partners, allies and equals, enriched by our past and hopeful for the journey ahead. Our transformed relationship stood as a beacon of change. A narrative of what is possible when love is guided by empathy, understanding and the courage to embrace one's truth.